Hi, Diana. How are you? Very good. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for accepting my invitation to the podcast I Don't Have a Title To with Renee Pena. Okay. Um, as I, I know you from a long time ago. You know. Yes, you do. Yes, I remember you when I met you at the network Univision when you just started out a beauty pageant participant of Nuestra Belleza Latina. You know, that's probably like around what was that? Eight, seven years ago. No, is actually is like when you first eight started. Eight years. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's wow. But it's crazy, yeah. It is crazy. I remember you because you stand out of all Thank of them. You. you know, I had a personal connection with you. We be, we connected right away. We became friends right away. And I am and I'm happy that I'm happy of who you are. Who have you become after the show? You know, I know yeah. you're a social entrepreneur, finance innovator, you are a runner. And you live in New York, and you're Latina. You're from Ecuador. I love all of that. You have like a whole, like, so much labels, and I'm, I'm obsessed with it, you know? Tell us, tell my audience about yourself that I haven't told. Um, well, I live in New York for the past 15 years. I'm originally from Ecuador. I moved when I was really young. Um, I was 18 years old when I moved. I moved for different reasons, like the ma majority of people they, that they immigrate to different countries in order to find new opportunities that they can now find in their own countries. And when I finished high school in Ecuador, I realized that my opportunities were very limited for the things that I wanted to do in life. And I never saw myself as, you know, I fin finished high school and then I'm not going to to do anything else or I'm just going to work and live a life where I'm not going to do my dreams. So I told my family, I'm like, hey, this is not for me. I don't I don't want to get married. I don't want to start working right away and not have the opportunity to learn and go to school and do something that I really want to do. And that's when I decided to immigrate to the United States. Good. Were you scared? Yeah. Very. I actually wasn't. I was very happy. Okay. Because I live in a I live in a household where my dad he was very, you know, the typical Latino dad where he's very protective, where he's very like, you know, if you're not going out, you mm -hmm. cannot have male friends. So it was kind of like for me, my leaving. It was something that set me free to do everything that I wanted to do in a positive way. Correct. Since my mom always taught me very good values. Uh, and I was very happy to be in a country where I have unlimited opportunities to do anything I really want to, from going to school, to work, to be able to help my family in Ecuador as well. And not only that, but also to the, is, you know, when they said the sky is the limit, is really like that in in this country, because it had, this and country it has given me everything has given me everything and all the opportunities that I wanted to do in life and also to my family. So I was very happy. I knew that I'm going to be alone. I knew I'm not going to have them next to me. But sometimes in life, you have to make, you have to make sacrifices. You, you cannot have, have it all. Sacrifices. I like that. So it's like a give and, give and take. I was like, you know, I'm not going to have my family, but I'm working towards myself so I can provide for my family in the future. And even if it takes me a couple of years of my life, it's okay. And I was very happy just to be here and to have the opportunity to work and to do anything I wanted to do. I was grateful for it. Great. Now, question. I like to get personal. Were your parents divorced sure. or two, oh, they were still together? No, they were together. They just recently got divorced, okay. I believe, three years ago because i come but, from a divorced family and i know how it is to have a mom's side very supportive a dad that's very macho latino no, were, when, I, when i left they were very they were they were still together and they just got divorced two and a half years ago okay for the better for the good for the better, that, that's important that's for the good. Important. yes yes i'm very happy for both of them though good i i i believe in happiness and i don't believe just because society had to tell you that 
you need to be married even though you don't get along with your spouse or even though you don't love each other anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to be together because that's what society tells you that you have to be together. I don't agree on that. Like, I believe, you know, they spend uh, 30 years together. They got married when they were very young, when they were like in their 20s. 20 years old so they were kids Inspired. and then i believe when you grow you grow to become somebody different eventually yep it will be natural to become some somebody different because if you stay the same it's an issue so i i'm a big believer if two people don't love each other anymore or they cannot comprehend each other anymore and then it's, it's time for you know for both parties to part get apart that's good that's good and yeah. i'm and i'm very happy that you're telling us that's part of the story because in the latin community we see that a lot you know i've been through it yeah, and yeah. i love my mom and dad you know one of the things that i have realized through friends and in my community and the latin community is that even though they they they're not happy together in their marriages or their wives or their husbands, they cheat or they cannot understand each other anymore. They still stick together, which is very, I find it fascinating. It's very weird yeah. because, you know, life is, life is too short. It is. Uh, we come to this world to be happy. And a lot of people, they just settle and live in this state of, um, I guess not caring anymore for anything else that they just live this miserable life and they just stay together instead of looking for their happiness. And I, and that's one of the issues that I have found in Ecuador where women, they get beat up by their husbands. Yeah. They get abused, not only physical, but also psychological. They get abused by their husbands and they still stick together, which is, is crazy. And like, yeah. why? I mean, you don't have They're to. They're afraid. You know, they're, they're afraid. afraid. They're, they're afraid, afraid of getting they're hurt. Afraid to, they're afraid to leave. They're afraid that what people are going to think. They're, they're scared of the families. You know, yeah. you cannot be alone as a woman and having two kids. You cannot be alone. You need to have a man next to you. And that's something that we need to break that state of mind for a lot of women. That it's not like that. You should be happy. You should be next to someone that loves you. Everybody should you look should for their happiness. Yourself. I agree. So, yeah. yeah I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that part. Now let's go back to Diana, <laughs> which I love. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, Diana, several years ago, you were known for being the contestant of Nuestra Belleza Latina in Univision, pursuing a beauty queen title and a crown. Now, question, do you believe that represents Diana Cano today? Like, are you still? Oh, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No. What is not. it? You know, I I try to grow every year, every moment. I try to become the best version of myself. I try, be, I try to become someone different constantly. And I mean, if I stay the same when I was 24, something will be wrong with me. So at that time of my at the time of my life, It was great, you know, I had to go through different uh, stages of my life where I learned, I grow, and also I make a lot of mistakes, Yep. uh, which it took me to become the woman that I am right now. I'm constantly progressing, not only uh, trying to learn different things, but also as a human being to become a better friend, better daughter, better uh, sister, and girlfriend, and everything else. So I'm always constantly not only doing the spiritual work, but also I'm doing the the intellectual work as well. Now, good. I'm I'm happy that you took that self awareness that you needed to change, and you did it. And that takes For a sure, lot, sure. and that takes a lot of a, a person to see it and change because I believe I, that I, we all go through phases. Sure. And I am always constantly analyzing myself. I, I do self-analysis uh, weekly or monthly or even throughout the day. And I'm like, okay, what did I do wrong? And how can I change my ways? What did I say? I'm very careful with the words that I say to people. I, That's good. I'm always analyzing and I'm like, okay, maybe I need to change. Maybe I need to be more patient. Maybe I need to be more giving. Maybe I need to be more... Uh, I don't know, more grateful for everything that I have because sometimes we are not. We have to uh, be grateful. Maybe, I've learned or that. Maybe I need to, 
yeah or maybe i just need to you know put more i need to help someone to become so to be to help them to become their fully them you know selves and i'm trying to work on that okay. i'm not saying that trying to look for perfection but i'm trying to work in things that i'm aware that i'm lacking of good well that's good that's very important um, I, I, I I love that. I love that. Now, what would you say for those girls, young girls that want to reach a title? I see so many stories. Everybody wants a crown. Everybody wants a title. Everybody wants attention these days. Do you think beauty pageants have changed through the past 10 years? Like, what do you what do, what do you want to tell these girls that want that so bad? It damaged them. I, I believe it damaged them. I agree, and I'm a I'm a I'm a example of that. I tell you why. I time has changed. It's not what it used to be before, where women used to be only an object of society, where you have to look a certain way in order to consider quote unquote beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were skinny, and if you wear you have great skin, or if you have uh boobs or if you have i don't know like s these characteristics that women need to have in order to be considered beautiful therefore a lot of us we do plastic surgery mm -hmm. because we think that we need to try to fit in into this society of beautiful what because that's what the media cell does that's what now all these young girls are seeing instagram and, and facebook where women they do all kind of plastic surgery i know so they can be considered beautiful so beautiful has been determined by society from time to time like if we go back to the 80s and 90s and 2000 women have changed their bodies constantly drastically to a different extent of what is considered beautiful uh as far as beauty pageants i believe beauty pageants should be more than just physical beauty i agree because in my opinion in my opinion you don't really have to be the most beautiful I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? We can say that all women are beautiful, but I believe there should be more target to a mission than anything else. Like, yeah. what, uh, what can you contribute to society or how can you change something or you need to have some kind of, like, vision in order for you to to work in, in that title. Not right. necessarily the way that you look. So it gives opportunity to many women that they want to compete using, using basically their brain their and brain. not just their body. They bring so, so much to the table. Yeah. So and then you, you right. So and then women is that once that you not focus on the, the physical aspect, you take away the the beautiful of the body of the women and you're Correct. using their brain, what they have to say, uh, how to present what kind of work they want to do, how it's going to impact society, how they're going to impact the people. Yep. And then now you are looking at them with different eyes that is just not the physical aspect. I agree. So in my opinion, beauty pageants, they need to change that and stop looking at women like we are an object because we are not. I, I agree with you. I believe women is the future and I've seen beauty pageants change in the United States, slowly changing from the perfection to the brain. And I think that's very important. We to focus on that and not, like you said, not consider women as an object because they are not. That, that, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Now, another question that I have for you, going from beauty pageant. Diana, your body has changed. Like, I am... Completely. Um, I, I love it. Like, I've seen you eight <laughs> years ago since I met you, and it's a huge transformation yeah. physically. Yeah. Also professionally, yeah. but physically. What, yes. What have you done? What happened? So it happens, a lot of changes came into my life. And, and as I try to become aware of uh, everything that's happening in the world, and I'm becoming aware of myself too. So when I was in, when I participating when we met in the beauty pageant i have for example like i had a uh, breast implants and oh hold on, hold on hold on no 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 hold on a second just to just to let people know what i used to do i used to dress diana i used to be the wardrobe stylist of the show so i know her body that's why i'm asking that question go ahead <laughs> <laughs> so 
And it was very hard for, you know, I don't know. I, I did it when I was really young and okay. I didn't have guidance. I was really, I don't know, I guess I did it in order to be beautiful. And then I went up one point in my life, I was like, you know what? I hate this. I don't really like this. I don't wow. like this implant. This is not part of me. That's not who I am. I really don't care. Wow. I believe that I want to live a very natural, organic, uh, a spiritual type of lifestyle where I'm connecting more with people for who they are and for Normal, they connecting natural. with me for who I am. Yeah. Instead of of how I look, and I wanted, I don't want it to have any strange objects in my body because, you know. The universe of God or whatever you believe make it the way that you are. And yep. we are so perfect in the way that we are created that we lack to see things. Yeah. We like to see how perfect we are in in our own way. Yeah. And we need to stop comparing ourselves with somebody else because we're not them and they are not us. Like so I always I say, we're not that, robots. We're not meant to be like. Yeah, right. <laughs> so then when... When I understood that, I was like, no, I don't want to have this anymore. And then that's when I went to the doctor and I was like, doc, I want you to remove this. And 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 I, you know, at first they said, yeah, you know, it can be you can have issues in the in the future because, you know, probably you won't be able to um, when you have a, a baby, you were, wouldn't be able to transmit the milk yeah. through your breast. And it I was like, you know, that's. Of- problems nerves yes and then one of the, that's one of the mistakes that you women we don't think before doing a surgery like that uh, we don't think about the complications that that can 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 lead in the future and we only think about the momentary um happiness or mm-hmm. or how it looks but we don't think what if i want to have a baby in the next five years what if i want to have a family and you don't think about they don't it. think so about then it that's when i became a, we don't. And then that's when I took them out. And then that Good was like you. a big relief for me. And and I liked it very much. I loved it. I, I never loved my body more than, than I do now. And then I also I stopped eating meat. So I was very... Really? Uh, I did. I did. I stopped eating meat. I didn't want to... I was in, I was into this phase where I wanted to try to eat only vegan. I didn't even want to eat cheese. I didn't want to eat yogurt. And I was trying to eat more... Um, everything that the Mother Earth is giving me naturally, like okay. all the, the veggies, rice, uh, grains, and stuff like that. So then I did it. I did it, and I realized that my body started changing. Everything wow. started changing, and and even the way that I felt, it started changing too. And I I was eating more, and I was still losing weight a lot. But you and cut the complete so Yes, when I cut the meat, oh, and then also, <laughs> you know, if I if you do it, say you do it for three weeks, believe me, you can do. If you can do anything for twenty one days, you can do it easily afterwards. Okay. Then then I um and then I start running a lot. I got into running. Yes. So it was a big change because think about it. I removed my my implants, and then mm. I became vegan, and then I start running a lot. So my whole body came into this transformation of somebody else, yeah. and 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 this, I guess that's why. And before it was never like that. I was working out, lifting weights, eating a lot of meat. Uh, I remember. I remember I that. I remember that. Yep. Yeah. Right. So it was completely different. Someone else. And mm. that's why now I live a very healthy lifestyle where I I run. I love running, and I. I eat anything that is not processed. I don't. I don't even eat cereals too much because it's processed. So I try to eat anything that is really natural from natural for from you. the plant. That's very, anything that's that is really made. I, I I think of you know if we go back twenty years ago, and if if you didn't find it, don't buy it don't because buy now it. we have in the supermarkets we have so many things that we don't even know what it is. So yeah. I try to eat anything that is natural, and that's when my body starts changing, and I can afford to eat anything I want and not put weight. Good. Well, I I've seen the transport the transformation, and I am blown off because I've seen it through the time. Do you think that was the most turning point in your life? Change changing that implants and going vegan. 
do you think that was your turning point in life? If it's not, what was it that made you like that, Diana? It's not what it used to be. Yeah, of, of course, because I'm not, you know, I'm not 24 anymore. <laughs> and the, the older that we become, the more aware and the more conscious we become with everything that we do. The yeah. things that the, the activities that we do, the time, the energy that we spend in the in people, in things, and activities, and we becoming more aware of taking care of ourselves and loving yeah. each other in in a way where it's not about physical; it's about uh, for who they are, for who you are. Um, more self care. Then, yeah, more yeah. self care yeah. and. And before I didn't care, you know, I believe in your early 20s, you don't appreciate your body, you don't appreciate yourself, and you put your body into these so many things and, and many that, you know, going out, drinking, partying, and you don't you don't take care of your body as much. And, and now I realize, like, you know, if you don't take care of your body, I mean, how can you take care of someone else? Or uh, yeah. how can you even yeah. talk to Yeah, I've learned yeah, that. That's the only thing that you yeah, that's the only thing that you have in your power is your butt. I agree. I've I've learned that through the years. Uh, when I've left, when I moved out of Miami, I completely changed my entire life. I went straight to fitness, straight to body, straight to change how I eat and what I was doing. And I'm telling you, I cannot change. Like, I wouldn't go back. Like, I don't have no regrets. I love that. I love that. But Diana, you, too. you lost a lot of weight. I have. I lot have of a lot of, of I've you, lost a lot you, of weight. You became more cut. Yes. yes. I've, and it's, and was, you actually look younger. You see, a lot of people have said that. People said, Renee, when you lived in Miami, you looked like a 20, like a 30 year old. And I look at pictures and I'm like, I really, I really <laughs> damaged. I, I, I really, it was, yeah. I've trust me. I've people have said it a million times, and I'm happy, and I feel so healthy, and I feel more energy than I used to. I don't go out as much. I don't drink as much, you know. And I and I have so much energy now, and I love it. I love it now. Right. But but Diana, you you run. You're a runner. You live in New York. You're a runner. What inspires you in running? You do all these five k, ten k. Can you tell us more? Why do you run? In, yeah, sure. To, you know, in New York, there is a big running culture. Yes. And I believe running with so many people also inspire you to become better. And not only that I do it for uh, exercise, and but I also do it because that's my only time where I take away everything that I'm thinking from work, friends, family, or anything else that I have to do. You know, we always have the to-do list. Yep. And when I'm running, I'm not thinking about anything. In that moment, my brain completely is like I'm meditating and I'm not thinking about anything in that moment, but just enjoying the beauty of the nature, enjoying the beauty of what I have around me, the sky, the birds, the the plants, everything, the, the air that I'm breathing. It's so nice. And then I, I, I'm running and that's when I, it takes me to a different space where I'm not thinking about anything. And it's my only time where... Okay, I escape reality and I'm here just myself in nature. I love that. And when I stop running it, yeah, it is so beautiful. I and love that. Uh, and then also, I feel you feel better afterwards. So you, you know, after you work out, you feel energized. You feel that you want to accomplish more things. And also, my thoughts become become clear about everything that I want to do after I I run. And sometimes this is a moment where I also meditate or I have better understanding of things that are not clear sometimes. So yeah. for me, it works really, really, really good. Very I good. love people. They hate it, but I, I love it. This is like my, my only time. And also I'm grateful that I'm, I'm able to run every day and we don't, we don't appreciate what we have. And, yes. you know, I see, I see in races people that they don't have legs wow. or arms and, and they, there, they're still training, they're still competing. And I'm like, you There's know, no I have everything. Yes, we have everything to be successful and to excel in everything that we do, mm -hmm. but we don't do it because we're too lazy or because we're so not used to, to have it next to us or we just don't care. And that's what inspires inspires me too, uh, that I'm still able to do these things. Yeah, no, I, 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 it, it's, I've seen races and I've seen... 
in we are share and all different you know difficulties but they're still there they're motivated and i and i appreciate that and it's like i always say people ask me what inspires you it's life we are alive we're here now we will know tomorrow and for them to do all these marathons it's 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 amazing there's no right. excuses and it's and they train hard they do they do they do they they train harder than we do actually yes i agree i agree. well thank you that's awesome i i I love following you with all your races, and it, it motivates me to go out and run in nature. I'm a, I, I, <laughs> I have passion for nature, and I love it. I love it. Nice. Now, oh, let's see, Diana. Why do I have to ask you? Because I have a lot of questions. When I met you, and throughout certain years, you had this strong personality that I think people would get intimidated by you. But I know you a whole different person. And I know who you are because we become friends. Like, how do people interact with you? Like, do you still get that perspective that people think you have all these strong personalities and views? Because I know that on your Instagram, people would, like, send you terif terrifying comments. And I, I'm like, oh, my God, like, back off like what like can you explain no not anymore not anymore maybe before when i was younger yes because i i was more demanding of people okay now i now not anymore now i try to embrace people now i try to like uh understand and be more comprehensive and if i don't like something i don't say i don't I don't really care anymore. Exactly. I don't put I don't put energy into something that doesn't make sense or something that I is not serving me. Yeah. So anything that is not serving me, I'm not putting energy into. So I really don't care if I can I can give my opinion good and if they don't like it that's okay too <laughs> I Very good. I became understanding of people and I realized that no matter what you do, you do it for yourself because people at the end of the day, they're going to be people and they live in their own little world and yeah, in their own different. head. And you cannot change them. You cannot try to make them see your with your own eyes the world because they're not equipped to do that. Yep. Uh, so I, I just try to be nice and understand people. And, and that's it. I, I, it's not about like having big personality, but I... I think like I always speak up my mind and sometimes when when you speak up your mind people tend to look at you a little weird or like why are you saying that because or judge you're you. not yeah. staying quiet or because you're not like the rest. I don't know. And I I was never like that. Like I always speak up my mind. But now I only give energy to what I want, basically. Good. Like, if it's something that's, that's not serving me, I I really don't care. They can be killing each other, saying <laughs> anything they want, and I'll be like, okay. Okay. You know what? You. Yeah, you're yeah. 100% right. I like, I like that you don't, so I, you don't get that, that energy. Yeah, so, Stay away. so, you know what, even people, when they try to, like, be mean um, in, in Instagram or Facebook, I don't, I feel actually sorry for these people because you people, you talk out of your heart. And if you actually have the time and energy to go online to write negative stuff about someone else, it's very sad. I, I don't yeah. feel bad about it. I feel bad about the person who's like, how miserable your life had to be in order for you to go and take that anger. Mm hmm against someone else that you don't know and and it's it's sad and it you is. have to understand that these people they eventually you know you don't know what they're going through so i you can't really get upset or anything but just feel sorry for them no i've 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 seen it happen to you and i and i sit back and I, i'm like how can people be this miserable but you know we're not all the same everybody's different everybody go through different kind of situations in line we don't know what's behind them and i and i'm sure. glad that you basically stepped away don't grab that energy and you know what leave people people will be people <laughs> exactly uh, pretty much yeah, yes basically basically diana 
What are your dreams? Like, like what are my dreams? Yes. I oh, I have so many dreams. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Say one, just one. I, I well, I want to see the entire world. I want to visit every single place, every single country in the world. Uh, I want to see everything. You know, I believe that I was put in this life for a very short amount of time because we don't have a lot of time in this era, right? So before we go, I want to, I, I want to see it all. Like I want to do it all. I want to see it all. I want to be in every single place. I eventually want to have also my my own family too. I would like to uh, change the world. Also, you know, I know it's very ambitious to say that, but one That's of my fine. things is to change the life of people. And okay. I that's what, that's all I want to do. Like, I want to create a system where I can change the life of communities and people for the better good. Good. Do you and see yourself going back to Ecuador someday? I'm not sure. I haven't think about it. I don't have anything that attached me in New York. I can always pick off and go. Yep. Uh, right now, I stay because I work in New York, but... Other than that, I can really go anywhere. And um, Ecuador, it would be really nice. I love Ecuador. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful countries that I've ever seen. Uh, but if I had the opportunity, why not? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't... I de- but I definitely don't. I definitely don't want to retire in New York City for sure. That I know. Where will you retire? Um. I don't know, somewhere in, in the beach town, for sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> beach town, yeah. Yeah, love it. Beautiful, beautiful. I want to wake up, walk through the beach, yes. eat, ni- eat nice seafood, and, and that's a very simple life. I don't need, I really don't, don't need, need much to be that's, that's no, no, no. In, that's important. I know. I know. Now that we talked about Ecuador, I don't want to get involved with a lot of uh, politics, but I there's been so much drama with the Ecuador, um, what is it, politics, and what, what is going on? What is it? What Can you short elaborate a little bit of that? And so what happened is that the president, it's a very long story, but long story short, <laughs> right now the prices, of, prices like gas are increasing and people are saying, no, this is wrong because we are a um, uh, in an oil country, right? We produce our own oil so it's it's crazy to say that we're going to raise the prices to 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 people because it's actually right there yeah right exactly so people are not in favor and that's why we'll be having all these kind of manifestations because they're not agreeing with the new economic measurements that the government has given to people okay now putting that drama on the side i want to go to ecuador why should people go to ecuador definitely (laughs) Oh my God, I can, I can, I can speak about it for like an hours and hours. So the Ecuador is such a small country that you have four different regions and in the four different regions, you can find different things. You can go to the Amazon where you can find the native, uh, tribes and, uh, indigenous people that they live there as well. And you can see how they live. You can see how the the way of eating and their the, well, how they they produce their own food is very like back in the day. They don't have even technology to be able to to do what we do here. And I, but I, they actually go. Yep. In the Amazon. I, I, that's and beautiful. In the Dominican Republic, it, it's the, the same way. You have the jungle. You have the rivers. You have. Uh, uh, the different animals that you're never going to ever see anywhere else. Beautiful. And then you have the highlands, where, which is the Andean's mountains, Beautiful. where that, if you know history, that's where, you know, the 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 Incas, they have their kingdom. So yeah. you have a lot of ruins that you can see. You have very little small towns. Like they still take you back from back in the day, and you get to see the people, the different type of foods, and the food that you eat there. You're never gonna find anywhere. So it's very unique to the region. I was gonna Same say, with the food. 
The food is amazing. Where the food is. <laughs> the food, the food. They have like 20 different fruits and, and veggies and stuff like that. And then if you don't want to be in the highlands, which is 9,000, I may be wrong, 9,000 or 10,000 meters above sea level. Yep. Uh, you can go to the coast, which is the Pacific. That's where I'm from. Okay. And you can go and you can go down of the of the of the the Pacific and see different beaches and see different uh, landscapes and is is very nice. And if you don't want to be there, you can always take a plane and go to the Galapagos Islands, oh, which I heard. is absolutely amazing. Yes. And it's such a beautiful place. It's a very unique place, and you can see how. Charles Darwin was talking about the the theory of evolution okay. and how much relates to what is happening in the world. So it's very it's very interesting, and you get to see different animals as well. So I love that all because you can see these four different regions in your trip within hours. So you really, can really, you can yes, yeah, you can see the whole country in I don't know in a couple couple weeks. So you can be in the Amazon. You can. Uh, go to the coast, you can go to the high lines, you can go to the Galapagos Island. Well, you know what? I have to book a flight and it's going to be with you. Yes, <laughs> and we have yes, to go to Ecuador because I, I love their so food. Down. You know, they say that you need to go with a local in order to have a good experience. And that's why you're going to be my my guide. <laughs> sure. I'm very happy. Yes. I love it. I love it. I um, I follow you everywhere you go. Uh, I know you went to where was it England to learn German? What? <laughs> oh, so what, what, what? I you know I love studying. I love to learn. I love to read. I don't even have a TV in my house. I made a decision three years ago that I don't want to have a TV, so I give away my TV to actually the doorman in in my building. And <laughs> the only thing that I have in my in my apartment is bunch of books and and a laptop that sometimes I watch Netflix here and there but most of the times I'm reading and I in London I went to study in a university that is called UCL University College of London and I study entrepreneurship I wanted to learn the education system in London since I study in the US I study in South America but I wanted to see how it was there and it was very complete. It was completely different from the U.S. and South America. Okay. Very interesting. Different mentality, different mindset. Uh, and I liked it a lot. Right after the the program, I went to Germany to study German as well. Yes. And then that's when I came. Uh, that's when I came back to New York. Nice. I had to work. We cannot be. Yeah. <laughs> very good. I I love I love people that love to learn. I'm a learner. I pick up a book. It's it's I, oh. it amazes me what a human can learn, what our brain can yes. manage. Oh, our brain can absorb so much. Yes. But we don't train our brains to like we've got to push our brain to absorb and keep learning. Yeah. And I want to learn it all. Sometimes you know I have a lot of books that I bought. And I'm like, when am I going to read all these books? I have no time. I want to eat, you know, I want to read them all. And and sometimes I'm reading one and then I have such a big, I shouldn't be doing this because I take <laughs> one book, and read for like, let's say one chapter and then I go to the another book. And I, I, do I do that too. I do that too. I need to stop doing this and finish one. Yep. And then go to the next, but and then I'm reading one, and then I have another one. I'm like, oh, this one it looks really nice. Let me read about it. And then I go to the next one, and then I'm like, when am I going to finish everything? I agree. <laughs> I have in back of my car a hot mess of books because I just pick them, start reading, pick up the other one, and read more. I love it. I love it. That's that's uh, that's amazing. Now, Diana, uh, what are you focusing now? What is Diana Cano so right doing? Yeah, so right now I'm in a different career path as far as work. So I'm doing right now advisory and placement for finance and accounting people. Okay. So I play C-level executives in different companies. Okay. So that's something that I haven't done it before. That's something new that I have the opportunity to interview with this company and I'm working with them. So I'm trying to excel and to give my best. So every day I wake up saying, how am I going to add value to this company, how am I going to contribute myself right. with everything that I know and be better in this company, grow with the company. I, so I'm giving my best in, in this Important. new 
role and so that and also I want to improve in my running so I'm constantly training so I can become better yeah um and then I, I, that's as far as my personal life. And then also I have a foundation that I yes. work in, uh, that I'm working on. So also taking my foundation in, into a, a different level where not only I, I do work in Ecuador, but also I find it difficult to do work in Ecuador since I'm not there. You know, it's, so mu- it's only so much that I can do. But working in New York, living and working in New York, I need to focus on in New York as well. So that's something that I will do next. And I try to like work with, I'm going to try to work with different community centers where they have, you know, you believe because here in the U.S. you have access to everything. There is a lot of, I see a lot of poor families that yes. they need help. And for example, like the education system, a lot of public schools a lot of the kids, they go after hour to these community centers to learn something. And these kids, they have never, for example, like if you go to the Bronx, a lot of kids in the Bronx, they haven't even gone out of the Bronx because they have in their minds that anything outside the Bronx is not really good. Yeah. And they don't even know how to go, go for an interview. They don't know how to do a resume. They don't know how to present. They're very shy when it comes to go to the real world. And also, so I'm trying to do try to partner up with some community centers and uh, create a money management and time management program for for kids so that you teach them since they're little how to uh, become savvy, safe and savvy with their money and with their time so they understand how everything works. That's very important. That's very important. Very important. So when they go to high school or when they they in and, and they see these concepts, they they're not scared or they don't like. Oh, I don't want to do finance. I, I, it bothers me. I don't want to do math because I don't like it. Uh, so what, you gotta teach them since they're little, so they become and aware of how. I'm glad. I'm glad you point that out, Diana, because school these days don't show or don't teach these kids anything about finance. You know, I did. I went to high school here, and uh, not here. I went to high school in Boston. They never had a class for us how to manage our money, how to manage a credit score, which is very important in the next future. Very important. How to con- It's just we need to teach these kids to be aware of their yeah. money, yes. and I'm happy so you're doing then- that. So I'm planning to do that because yeah. I've been in New York. And I can do that. It's something that I I know how to teach and how to teach people. And I contacted different community centers. They had to give me the opportunity to create my own program. So and then also I got to see how many kids are going to be able to go and how to work. So I'm going to launch a pilot to see how I can change it and if it works or it doesn't work and also for mainly for like Latino communities for children that they are underprivileged and they don't have the opportunity to have access to a very good education and one of the things that I that I have seen because a lot of these Latino kids they don't a lot of them they don't even they go to school but they don't even speak English yeah I, I it's very weird to it's very weird to me I'm like you know that's their lack of and then when they never go to college and when I was in college here, I was one of the few Latino women that they were there. Very, very few. Wow. Not too many. And that needs to change because we need to teach young girls that, you know, you don't you don't have to. Uh, you, when you, the problem is that, for example, if you ask a young girl to draw an engineer or to mm-hmm. draw a doctor, or you ask a kid, oh, can you draw an astronaut? They're gonna draw a male. They're it's not true. gonna draw a woman. Their perspective so it is the, it's it's a male. We not need a to woman. change that. Yeah, we need to change this. Uh, you know, to these young girls, like, hey, you can be an engineer. You can be an astronaut if you want. You can be anything you want to be. And we need to start changing by putting this into their heads since they're young. Awesome. That this awesome. is now. That only a male role that any woman can be. If you want to be a coder, you can be a coder too. Since they're little, anything's possible. Anything's but it's possible. yeah. But if, it's, so it's something with, for example, like if you ask a kid to draw, um, I don't know, a cook. 
I don't know. And, and no, we I, have these bias. Where, no, I know. We're, we're so used to the man doing everything and women staying at home. I think the perspective of a woman is changing and taking a risk and having the woman take in charge of jobs that the man used to have. It's very important. Right. And, I'm, and I'm happy that you're going to yeah. be doing that and empowering these women that you can do it. I'm very, yeah, I'm very yeah. happy for that, and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Hopefully, we can do something like it. My goal is, if I can change the life of someone, I have, I have accomplished a lot. I'm, I will be very happy in life. Like that's it. Thank you, thank you for bringing that. Thank you for empowering people, especially women. <laughs> thank you for, for being Diana Cano and who you are today. I think you bring a lot of value to people. And it's an, it, it amazes me, and this is why I wanted to interview you, because you have changed, and people need to see that, that we are humans, <laughs> that we go through phases, that we change, and that we can take risk and know that we can do it. And you did it, and I've seen it, and I'm super proud. Thank you very much. we got to always keep changing. If we're not changing, we're doing something wrong. We're doing something wrong. Well, Diana, thank you. I have a question. Do you have a question for me? Question for you. Oh, my God. Of course. <laughs> one question. One what? question. <laughs> well, I have so many questions, but I have one question. Okay. I, when, wait, when is the wedding day? Ah! <laughs> uh, we don't have and, a specific and, day. <laughs> I want to be invited. Yes, you will get okay. an invitation. <laughs> it's so it's so funny. Uh, I haven't spoken about that yet, but uh, he's he's a Mainer. He's such a family guy. And when it comes to wedding and big weddings, when I met him, he's like, you know what, Renee, uh, your family's way too big. You're Latino. We need to have a small wedding. I'm like, well, what's a small wedding? A hundred, uh, fifty, hundred people. He's like, are you out of your mind? Ten people is enough for the wedding. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm going to die. I need a big wedding. I'm Latin. <laughs> but we don't oh, know yet. We have no specific day. We're learning to be a partner. We're learning to be a relationship. Uh, and, and it's hard. But we we really love each other and i think that's the most important thing learn of each other he looks very the, sweet he looks very sweet guy the time will come thank you so much he is a love of a person thank yeah, you Diana. very happy for you thank you thank you very happy you found you better have <laughs> yes yes and i think you you got engaged didn't you yeah, so my boyfriend, he lives, right now he's in Germany. He's in Germany. He's German. Oh. So he is, uh, he's living right now in Germany because work. Okay. So he is an investment banker here in New York, and now he got transferred to Germany uh, to work in some projects. Okay. So we don't know when he's going to be back to New York, or I will have to go back to, I will have to go to Germany. So either or. Okay, well, that's that's fine. That's fine. At least uh, you guys are together, and it's about uh, taking the time and getting to know. And yeah, and that's it's, fine. You know, he never he always supported me. He never is important. like, oh, you had to come here, or you no, not at all. It's like do your pro do your projects, Diana. I know you want to do everything, so let you do whatever you want. Run, do your awesome. foundation. Such a busy support. Yes, I mean, for him, it's important to, for me to become who I want to become okay. more than anything else. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it every day. I cannot wait to see more of Diana Cano. I am very grateful to have you on my podcast, no, Diana. Thank you, thank thank you for thank you. accepting my invitation. Okay. And please keep me put updated with everything that you're doing. And if I can help you with anything, you know where to reach me. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Now, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Diana Cano was an amazing girl. She still is, and she's going to be a successful woman. I cannot wait to see that. <laughs> I am happy to have this. Now, please comment and share. And please, if you have anybody in mind that you want me to interview that brings value to this podcast and video, please let me know and send them my way. Thank you very much, Diana. <laughs>